Are you thinking about studying medicine and becoming a doctor in Australia? Perhaps you're wondering exactly what's involved, what exams you need to sit and how long it takes. Let's take a dive into exactly what you need to know before studying both undergraduate and postgraduate medicine in Australia. Hey, my name's Adam, I'm a junior doctor in Australia and I've been through this whole process before, so hopefully I can shed some light on how it all works. In Australia, entrance into medical schools vary depending on whether you're applying to either undergraduate or a postgraduate medical program. If you're familiar with the US system, you'll know that traditionally you have to study an undergraduate degree before commencing medical school. However, in Australia it differs slightly and they do have undergraduate medical programs, meaning that you can study medicine directly out of high school. However, if you don't study medicine straight out of high school, there's also the option to do a postgraduate program requiring you to complete an undergraduate degree before commencing medical school. In Australia, there are nine universities that offer undergraduate medical degrees and 13 that offer postgraduate medical degrees. Let's start by taking a look at these undergraduate medical programs first. In Australia, Australia undergraduate medical degrees typically range between five and six years depending on the program with an optional research year at some point along the way. These programs are typically structured with the first two years being based on campus at the university, learning basic medical sciences and foundations and clinical skills, preparing you for the hospital environment. The remaining years are then typically focused on clinical placements and building your clinical skill set in the hospital environment. And these are ultimately the skills that you'll then use when you become a doctor, a junior doctor, and throughout your medical career, essentially. But getting a place into undergraduate medical school will require a few things. Firstly, universities will look at your ATAR score, the final score you receive when you finish high school. Universities might also look at different prerequisite subjects that you might have completed throughout your high school. That might be subjects like chemistry, biology, a certain level of maths, English, and there might be minimum scores that they require for entry into their courses. Again, this varies between different universities, so it's worth doing some research and looking at what different universities require of their applicants. I'll try and put a link in the description below that kind of summarizes each of these requirements from different undergraduate universities. And next, universities will take a look at your UCAT score, which we'll touch on a little bit in a second. And lastly, if those two scores that they've combined are good enough, universities might offer you an interview, which is the final stage typically of the application process. And if you want to learn more a bit about the interview process, and how to best prepare for it, you can take a look at this video here and that might be helpful in your preparation. But for now, we're just gonna focus on entry into medical school in general. And now each of these factors will be weighed up by the universities in considering whether your application is successful or not. And essentially, each university kind of weighs this differently. So it's worth checking on how different universities operate in their admissions process. Now let's touch on the UCAT. The Undergraduate Clinical Acumen Test, or the UCAT is a computer-based test used for applications and admissions into undergraduate medicine, dentistry, and other clinical degrees in Australia. If you're like me and you sat the UMAT back in the day when you finished high school, the UCAT is essentially a newer version of that that has replaced the UMAT. The UCAT is a two hour exam comprising of 233 multiple choice questions broken down into five different sections. First section is verbal reasoning. The second, decision making. Third, quantitative reasoning, abstract reasoning, and situational judgment. And this averages out to be around 31 seconds per multiple choice question. So it's worth having a think about how you're gonna approach the test and consider preparing for it well in advance. And some universities might also ask for an additional written application, which might include something about, you know, volunteer experience, a bit of a personal statement, your motivation for medicine, and a little bit of a written piece about yourself. So it's also worth doing research about which universities might want that and preparing that in advance as well. Now, whilst undergraduate medical degrees are typically for those just leaving high school who haven't studied any tertiary degree prior, there are some exceptions and some universities do allow applicants who have either started an undergraduate degree or completed an under undergraduate degree. And so it's worth doing a bit of research and looking into how universities allocate their spots based on prior academic experience. Now let's touch on postgraduate medicine. Postgraduate medical degrees in Australia offer those who have studied a range of undergraduate degrees the opportunity to study medicine. This is the pathway that I personally took after completing an undergraduate biomedical science degree, which is a pretty common pathway for a lot of people trying to enter medicine. 
And so it's something that I'm quite familiar with. And the beauty of graduate entry medicine is that the pathways one can take into medicine are virtually endless. You know, I study with people who have incredibly varied life experiences, those that have studied degrees beforehand, ranging from engineering to business to technology, computer science, that sort of thing, who have then wanted to forge a career in medicine. Those who have joined the workforce, done a bunch of different things, and then decided that medicine is something that they wanted to try out. And I think that that's pretty incredible because it allows people of different backgrounds with different life experiences to bring their knowledge and understanding of the world into forging a really great medical career. And most postgraduate medical schools these days allow you to do exactly that. They allow people from diverse backgrounds with different undergraduate degrees, but it's worthwhile taking a look at each university's specific requirements because some might require you to have studied you know, chemistry or biology or certain subjects in an undergraduate degree prior. And each university's entry requirements are essentially summarized in one document called the GEMSAS guide and each year an updated GEMSAS guide is released and that has all the information you need to know about applying, prerequisite subjects, how many spots each university offers, what the stages are for application, whether you need an interview, whether they look at your GAMSAT score, and then how each of those segments are weighted as well. So it's worthwhile taking a look at that. In the description below, I'll link the most recent GEMSAS guide so you can have a look through yourselves. And similar to undergraduate degrees, most postgraduate medical schools will have one to two preclinical years where you're focused primarily in the university campus setting, learning about the foundations of clinical medicine, about medical sciences, and that really typically prepares you for the hospital environment where the remaining sort of two to three years are spent doing clinical placements in the hospital itself. So what does the application process look like for postgraduate medicine? Universities will typically look at a few different factors. Firstly, universities will look at your GPA or your grade point average, and this is essentially the score that your university provides you based on your academic performance. And because each university calculates their GPA slightly differently, um, GEMSAS provides a seven point GPA scale, which tries to kind of standardize each university's scoring system. I'll put a link in the description below to the GEMSAS calculator. And this basically calculates your GPA so you can get a bit of an idea of what it looks like on the GEMSAS seven point scale. And secondly, you'll need to set the GAMSAT. The GAMSAT is a standardized test used for graduate entry into medicine, optometry, dentistry, and other health science degrees, primarily in Australia and the UK. It comprises of three separate sections, a multiple choice humanities reading comprehension test, an essay section where you have to complete two written essays, and a final multiple choice science question test as well. In the most recent test, the first section comprised of 62 questions in 92 minutes, with an additional eight minutes of reading time. In the second section, you have one hour to complete two writing tasks with an additional five minutes of reading time. And on test day, you'll then have an hour long lunch break. Returning for the final section, you'll have 142 minutes to complete 75 questions with an additional eight minutes of reading time. And there are two main sittings for the GAMSAT. One is in March and one is in September. And if you wanna know more about the GAMSAT and how that all works, I'd suggest taking a look at this video here. It's a video that I made about the GAMSAT process, what's involved, the structure of the test, and a bit more about how to prepare and some tips and tricks for studying. So I'd recommend taking a look at that for some insight into the GAMSAT. And lastly, there's the interview, which is the final, but also a really important stage in the medical application process, which universities will use to weigh up your application. And similar to undergraduate medical degrees, universities will only offer you an interview based on your first two scores. So in this case, your GPA and your GAMSAT scores. But it's worthwhile thinking a little bit about in advance and preparing for the interview, because essentially it's your last step in the application process. And most postgraduate medical schools are part of the GEMSAS admissions process, which will essentially allow you to rank each university as part of one centralized application process. And basically what that means is if you receive an interview, you'll only receive one interview based on your preference list and the university highest on your preference list that has offered you an interview. And after that interview, you're only really offered a spot from either the university that you interviewed at or any university below that university on your preference list. Does that make sense? So for example, if you receive an interview from the university that's fourth on your preference list, you're only eligible for a spot at either the university that's fourth on your list or fifth, sixth, seventh, and so on. Not any of the universities that are higher than fourth on your list, so first, second, or third. I hope that kind of makes sense. And the other thing to consider is that some universities aren't part of this centralized GEMSAS application process. 
So for example, the University of Sydney and I think Flinders University as well aren't involved in this centralised system, so you'll have to send separate applications to them as well. It's worthwhile keeping in mind that you need to do this in advance because some of the different applications require a few different separate parts and it can sometimes take a bit of time to get those together and make sure that they're through. And those universities might also have different closing dates compared to the centralised GEMSAS system. So again, it's worthwhile getting on top of this early and doing the research. Now finally, probably the last thing to consider with university applications is the portfolio. So some universities like the University of Notre Dame Australia and Wollongong University and a few others now will ask for essentially a portfolio to be submitted alongside your application. And this is basically a fourth arm of your application. And they'll consider things like, again, volunteer experience, life experience, uh, work experience, study experience, taking into account essentially you as a whole person rather than just different elements of your application. And so the portfolio can be really useful for people who have diverse life experiences to be able to put that into their portfolio and use that as part of their application a bit more clearly. So it's worthwhile considering how this plays into your application process. Writing portfolios can sometimes take more time than you anticipate and a while to finesse and get done really well. So that's the general process of getting into medical school in Australia. It's a little bit of a slog and it's a lot of hard work, but definitely rewarding in the end. So good luck to all of you who are just starting this journey now or who are partway through it and good luck with your applications. Medical school is definitely the start of a long, challenging and rewarding journey, both as a student and as a doctor, which is a whole nother process in itself. But good luck to everyone applying and feel free to comment below if you have any questions or any of your own experiences that you want to share with the community. I'm always happy to answer questions and get a bit of a discussion going in the comments. Otherwise, if you found this all helpful, feel free to like the video and subscribe. It really helps and I'll be posting a lot more medical school related content shortly. So stay tuned for all of that. Thanks and see you soon.